Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Swissman15 back with another episode of Noob School. This is going to be infantry tactics, because you know the infantry are the basics of the lines and such. Uh, let me extend this, yep, there we go. Look at that, I can do that mid-recording and everything. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be a little stuff on infantry and how to use them, but before we get into that, I just want to address a few things that are dangling from the last episode, the Cavalry Tactics episode. First and foremost, I completely forgot to mention that um, when you charge Cav, it, if it's going uphill, sometimes it's less powerful, or if you have like rocks in the way or other things in your way, or any any city street like in a siege, the Cav charge is probably not going to be that effective and they'll pull out their swords, which happens a lot. So that's something you have to know when charging calves, so be careful that uh, your ca calf charges are being effective and all, because, you know, you want effective calf charges. And also, uh, there was a little controversy over the uh, calf charge, or the Swiss men, which apparently is now called the Swiss men because it's called the calf bug, but it's not the calf bug because the calf is working as intended. <laughs> it's one of the few things working in this game, yay! But. Uh, People were saying that it's a cheap tactic and such, but uh, I, I disagree. I think it's a valid tactic, saying that it, I think overall it, it, it makes a new dynamic to the game. I think it's not that easy to do correctly. You can try it, you can try to do it. It seems easy in principle to charge forward. Well, no, you can't always do that. You have to micro more, especially getting out and then using cap effectively from there. And I think it's um, still effective. And I th also, I don't think it's a cab bug, because you can avoid the situation in so many different ways. And so don't just say it's a cab bug, because you can car charge through. And some people are scared that, well, now people know that for this cab, cab charge and think it's uh, overpowered and do it all the time. Well, if you do it all the time, you can counter it and crush them. So you have to know when you can use the cab charge correctly. So I will explain how you can counter that uh, later this episode in the infantry tactics. But uh, let's go into the infantry tactics, actually, and we can go to the overalls in battle. So basically they are the lines. They are your, the bulk of your army in most cases, uh, are the lines, bulk of the army, right there. Uh, they mainly just like protect your archers, I mean, other than that, they or the archers support them, because the infantry is the army. Um, everything else is technically like a support. I can't ha you c unless you're the Mongols, you can't really have an army without the uh, without the infantry there. And uh, sometimes they can be used to so support cavalry. And a large thing of them is they save money. If you get the like pike units um, or just cheap um, infantry, you can really save a lot of money and use it for other more important units like cavalry. So always cavalry, or sometimes archers and other uh, unique cases, but. Definitely, it is very, very useful to uh, get some cheap units, maybe some pike militia like uh, Frigic likes to use, because they they are effective and they cost very, very little. I think it's 230 florins fully upgraded uh, pikemen, or at least fully upgraded in defense. Ah, some sweet, sweet iced tea. Alright, so let's go for the types and best units. Uh, there's what there I call short and sh sword and shield heavy infantry like dismount conquistadors, Venetian heavy infantry, dismount imperial knights. They're like pretty good. They're pretty good units. You also have uh, dismounted field knights and dismounted shock knights that are also very good. They're the basics. They are pretty much the best of uh, heavy infantry. Two handers are supposed to be good heavy infantry, but they're not because of the two handed glitch. So you have to be aware of that. They're not going to outperform the other heavy infantry. They will outperform the other infantry, but not the. Uh, sword and shield heavy entry. But two hundreds are actually actually very, very good at taking out cav and they can be used as like a semi spear unit, because spears don't actually work as they're supposed to. Because <laughs> they actually get wrecked by a charge. And um yeah, they're actually very useful, especially the Varanian Guard. And they they tend to be very cheap, especially the British Axemen are only three eighty florins. And they're actually pretty effective. So you can get them, maybe put some upgrades on them and then you can use them as anti cav and such and have them help you win the cab engagement or in if they don't if they can't get into the cab engagement you can still use them as an infantry unit in the infantry engagement pikemen which is not my forte to say the least uh, i don't use pikemen i think they're rather immobile but they're they're still pretty good you have the swiss pikemen landschneck pikemen teriyaki 
Tarakio Pikemen, Noble Pikemen from the Scots, which are very good, and the Volige. They're all very good. Volige have more like, um, I think it's called the Volige, the actual blade, but there's also like, they're similar to Habdur, Habdurbs and such, where they have, they make spear walls, but they're not quite as spears, but they all are very good at anti-cav. They're very good at holding the lines, delay, um, saving money. They're all very cheap, especially the Volige, I think are only 5 K Teriyaki only three K. I mean, yeah, not three K, not three K. Three hundred florins. Voyager only five hundred. My God, they're not three thousand. That is very expensive. Don't get them if they were. <laughs> anyway, they they're good. Um, they have their certain uses and such. I'm not particularly good at them, but they're very good at holding lines, and they should be combined with uh quality infantry if you do get them because pikemen will eventually lose to uh the other mentioned infantry. And then you have the meat shields, which is your peasants, my personal favorite religious fanatics, woodsmen. I like to use religious fanatics in Rush. They sort of make like a meat shield. You can use them to protect from archer fire. And also, you you can use them as like makeshift attacks and use them on another crap unit to like take out, keep the archers occupied, or go in the cab engagement, or just take down that stupid pike militia unit that is bothering the hell out of you. And they're very good at that. So, uh, Get those meat shields when you, you think you could. And also, they save a lot of money. Peasants are, what, 110? Religious fanatics are 180? So they're not that much at all. So you can get them. And that is a shout from down there. And I really hope they're not going to be very loud. Okay, they are being loud. I'm going to pause the video for a bit. Sorry about that. Uh, well, my sister was on the phone with her stupid friends. And they were chatting it up. Because my sister doesn't like to take any regard to my request for silence. But she's gone now, so thank God. And uh, I think, believe, we were about to move on to the next part, which is once again the key to the diagrams. Um, we have the Allied Skirmishers, Allied Cavalry, Allied Infantry, all. So uh, Skirmishers, Trapezoids, Triangles, Cavalry, Rectangles, Infantry, Hollowed Out is Loose Formation, Arrows Movement, Hollow Arrows is Missile Fire. Yeah, that's pretty basic. Alright, just because all of you seem so intent on learning how, why the cavalry rush is not OP at all, here is how to counter it. Well, this is not technically um, an infantry maneuver in the uh, strict sense, but uh, technically sort of it is. Well, first thing you can do, you're, you're rushing up your infantry, and the enemy is rushing up his, and you can send up your cav to stop his cav from killing your infantry because that works out really well. Or it, this isn't even necessary if you have pikemen, because pikemen will co destroy the cat that is tra charging in. But um, this is only beneficial if you think, if you just want to get a simple and easy solution to the cav charge, because y there's no way of telling if you'll actually win the cav engagement at this point, and it just puts the entire battle into like a weird brawl. So it's not necessarily the best choice. So there's other choices I'm going to show you right after this, but um, just so you know, so you just charge your cab into his and stop his, and um, then you have to maneuver out and everything, and then try and flake around. Pretty basic. Um, just that that's the easiest way. But if you want to try and be more elaborate and try to get a good victory, you can try to do another method, which is where you have the cav, which is approaching on your infantry, and you can turn back. Like, uh, right here, I have arrows showing right down here. Just start sprinting back. Don't walk, start sprinting back. What happens is the cav will charge, ca ch try to catch up, and um, usually, not all the time, but usually, the, uh, they'll, have, they'll like catch up slightly, just in a nick of time, and they'll put away the, the lances, and they'll sort of just like, Walk or walk in without the charging without the lances, and then you can melee, and they don't get the charge bonus, or at least not a strong charge bonus at all. And you can take out the cav pretty pretty well if you just go turn back and then charge in once you have them caught like that. But um, it, it's sometimes doesn't sometimes it doesn't work all the time. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work all the time. Um, it doesn't work all the time. Yeah, and um. It is a bit risky, but it is very beneficial, because at the same time, you could have your cav going out on the flanks and get some rear charges, which is really nice. So you can pretty much completely dominate the flanks by the time he gets out, if you can do it correctly, and you will lose minimal infantry, if anything. And, um, yeah, it's very, very useful. And it, it's particularly good if you're going uphill, because cav is slower uphill. Um, 
Well, yeah, if you run backwards uphill, not if you're going um, backwards downhill, because then the cab will only get there faster. <laughs> but uh, if you're going backwards uphill, and then the cab really slows down, and they sort of catch up, they start trying to do a melee, and then you charge back into them, then you really got them. So uh, you can take out some of the cab that way. So turning it into pretty much your own advantage, because then you have your cab around, and you're free to do what you wish with your cab. Um, here's another way. Um, say you don't have any pikemen and you can't just charge through, and you don't want to send your cab in, and you don't you don't really trust backing up. What you could do is uh, you could either have some meat shields. Say you have some uh, religious fanatics, and you throw them in the front lines to take the brunt of the charge, and then you have your infantry come in and clean up. And at the same time, you have your cab going around and flanking. So by the time they get out, they will have taken out either crap unit or two good units, but you save but you at least save most of your infantry and you have your, your cab in a great position to do even more damage to the other guy. So this is probably the, um, the second simplest, but uh, it's probably the easiest to get done and the most beneficial. Um, it might be a little risky. You don't have your uh, back line, this, this back line here, too close to this front line, but as long as they hold off the charge, it's pretty good. And sometimes what people don't realize is if you do that cab charge and they are focusing on this back line, and you're rushing these guys forward, the uh, cab won't recognize that they have to charge in these guys, and they'll sort of start trying to run through the first uh, throwaway units, and then you have your throwaway units stopping them without even taking a charge, and that could be even better for you. So uh, those are the th three main easy ways. There are other ways. There's plenty of ways, really. So it's not an OP tactic to do the cab rush. I just showed you ways, and if you can't stop it, and if you're afraid people are going to do it all the time, well, rest assured, you can go do this, show them what's up, and then sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't, but um, depending on how well you perform and how the other person performs and reacts to it. But it's, ju it's just a ba basic way to cavalry rush, and this is how you can just stop it from ruining the entire game for some people. And um, I hope that people take this to heart. Okay, now let's get back to, uh, like, direct infantry stuff, which is uh, the classic line engagement. Either you have right here, where you're just even in line, probably better if you know your infantry is if you know your infantry is going to do just as well, or better than your enemy. Sometimes it would be better to try and stretch out a little thinner than your enemy and get a flank like this over here. Uh, that's not always possible, considering that you don't want to have your lines too thin, because then your um, infantry will break a little bit too quickly. You want to have an, a little bit of thicker lines for infantry than you would for cavalry or archers because they need to um, sustain a melee fight. But you want to have like decently um, wide lines, but not not too wide where you only have two two ranks. You want to have like maybe three or four is probably the best um, if you have them lined up because then they have some like background to go and you want to you can try and get a little flank like that in the line engagement and then wrap around as this unit would route then make that one round and so on and so forth then you also have the anti-cavalry maneuver let's assume your cavalry has been thwarted because you put a lot of infant money in your infantry which would, will work out well for you because if you have this if you have the available units for this if you have superior infantry because you put your money in the infantry and you have pikemen, you can put pikemen in the back right here. If you have this back line here and face them outward, you sort of form a protective shell from rear charges from the enemy infantry, and your other um, heavy infantry will be fighting off the uh, infantry of the other player. So then they can't really charge you from behind, and your pikes would wreck the cab if they were to try. So you can probably end up winning the um, infantry engagement with your superior infantry because you put so many upgrades in them, and uh, you still have your pikemen too, in case things get a little iffy. But uh, I never use this, uh, I'm not a fan of putting stuff in infantry or pikes, but I've seen it done and it does work if in a worst case scenario where your cab has been thwarted, because uh, it can save you the match, so it's useful to try and do this. I've seen Paladin Bob do it, I believe, once or twice, especially when he doesn't even have cab at all, he just sort of makes a box. Uh, not a new box per se, because he gets his archers out of it, and he moves with it in a fluent way, and Paladin Bob has a really interesting way of playing without Cav when he wants to. 
Uh, we also have cavalry support. This is very, very basic. Say you have your cav going the flank and the enemy has his cav going the flank to counter yours. Well, um, who's, who knows who's going to win that engagement? It could be either of you. Well, say you have some Crote Axemen, which is a very cheap 2 ender unit, or any like noble knights, English knights, um, Varangian Guarded. You can put them on the flank like I right here. I, that's what I tend to do with my armies of Hungary or... Um, Hungary... I was hungry in some other faction that I put. England, I have I put a Billman or Crote Axeman to the side, and then I try and get them in the cab engagement because they do very, very well against cab, and they're very cheap and save money. So they, they, it's a pretty versatile unit. Uh, worst case scenario, it will hold itself in a melee with other infantry. But if you have this done, and then you have the cab engagement over here on the flank, like so, you can get your infantry in, either have them hold the line for one of your cab units and get the cab to flank around, or they'll just smash the cab anyway, because two-handers will kill them quickly. So it's very, very useful, and um, it could be uh, used to win the, cab engage quit win the cab engagement quickly, and then go around and attack the enemy infantry with flanks with your cab that has emerged victorious. So it's a very simple, very easy way of using uh, your infantry to win the battle. Also, uh, this is a worst case scenario, say, but it happens a lot actually. <laughs> say one person has cav and the other does not. If you're the, you are the person without any cav, but you have infantry and archers left, and he has cav, he has an advantage and he'll probably win, but it would still, there's still ways to uh, try and beat him, because usually the more person with infantry has more units left. What you can do is put all your units in loose formation and um, try and get them in long lines, the opposite of what you had before, because you want them to sort of um, be re resistant to charges, because where the cav first makes contact, it'll slow down and not kill the rest. So you want to get loose formation, long lines facing them, and you want to, if you have any skirmishers, archers, you want to get them protected by your infantry because they will do most of the killing. They can get missile fire out from these guys and pretty much take out the uh, cav for you if, since melee is not going to be the best option because they will probably just do cycle charges in and out. So if you're in that position, just make sure to get all your units um, in uh, loose formation. You can try and do similar to the anti-cav rush where you sort of run your troops back as they charge in and then you turn back once they sort of stop the charge and are trying to do melee, which is uh, also very useful. So uh, finally, we have, um, completely separate from cav finally, and uh, thankfully, we have just the infantry rush. Say the cav's off do busy doing its own thing, well, uh, and you're rushing completely. You don't have any skirmishers, usually, for this. You can put, like, you put, like, religious fanatics or some other meat shield unit right here in the front lines and you rush them up and they will take the brunt of the missile fire from your enemy archers if they have a balanced army and then you will keep your uh, superior infantry in the back just behind them where they'll be safe from most missile fire some will get through and then they can go in and help support the uh, the charge and rush which is yeah it's, it's basic these are just basic tactics just so that uh, people know, because I've seen people who don't know this. And now we go on to what not to do. Uh, get these units, apparently I didn't put the units there, so <laughs> let me just list them out. Don't get Gothic Knights. Gothic Knights are um, very, very expensive. They're two-handers and they don't, they're don't they not good. They don't even have effective against armor. They're not even good anti-cav because of how expensive they are. Just like the Twi-hander of Forlorn Hope. So any of that Holy Roman Empire infantry that is a two-hander, just don't even bother with it. Um, also, what other units are there? There are the... Um, what is it? For, um, for Scotland, there is the, the there's a 200 sir unit, I completely forgot what it's called. I think it's Highland Nobles. Probably Highland Nobles. Uh, yeah, they're Highland Nobles, and they will not do well, because they're just a giant sword. Any giant sword unit, just don't bother with them. They're not good. Try and get the ones with axes that you can use as a two-hander. And um, other than that, do try to avoid getting... Oh god, that was a loud laugh down there. Anyway, <laughs> try to avoid getting... What what unit am I thinking of? I'm not thinking clearly. This is why I, had a, I should have written them down like I was supposed to, but I didn't. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm greatly sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm just gonna cry, cry, cry. Oh, 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 don't get town militia. Town militia are basically peasants that 
cost more. So don't get Town Militia if you're going to get a, a Meat Shield unit. Don't get Town Militia. If I didn't get Spear Militia, because Spear Militia at least has a cab bonus, but uh, Town Militia just has nothing. They're just blech, blech. Yeah. Just don't. Yeah, please don't. Um, try to avoid getting, um, letting the enemy cavalry get a good charge on you, unless you have pikes, of course, in which case, let them have the best charge ever, because they'll be dead once they complete it. But uh, don't let cavalry get the charge. That's uh, pretty important. And do not charge your pikemen. If you have pikemen, don't try and charge them. You have to, if you have pikemen, you have to play back, reserve them, use them slowly, have them support your infantry, have the enemy come to you type of playmen with, uh, pikemen. They, uh, they're more slow, lumbering, defensive units. And do not bunch them up. I underlined, highlighted, italicized, and bolded this, and I put exclamation points in all caps, so you have to remember this. Don't bunch them up. People do it all the time. You see, you t people like select all their infantry, and they send it, they send it to the center unit, tell it to attack the center unit of your enemy, and then all your infantry will bunch up, and they will rout once they are in the engagement, because they'll get surrounded so easily. So don't bunch them up. Micro. Say, this unit attached to the Say you have one far unit, make it attack the other far unit. Then one in, have them attack. Center units attack. Attack the center units, and so on and so forth. So you just keep your lines. That's very important for infantry, because there's only so much you can do to uh, win an infantry engagement. Get engagement. There's not much micro you can actually do. So I, got, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope you guys tell people who need this video, or who might benefit from this video, to come do it. Please, please, please really get them to watch this. They will learn, and then we can get better battles all around, hopefully, if people can start using and learning from these tactics. Important to note, do not think that these tactics are going to completely mm -hmm. Um, set you and make you set in the game. You have to work and modify them for yourself. You have to make them your own style, add your own flair. So make sure you do that if you are watching these videos. Don't try and just be a bland thing, because if people know what you're going to do each time, then you're going to become easy to defeat. But uh, also, if I missed anything, I hope you guys comment it. If you like it, if you like what I've been doing here, please leave a like. Every little like counts. Um, it makes the video go places. Some places, not necessarily college, or never college, because videos can't attend college, but just places, good places, people will see, and we can get rid of noobs altogether in Medieval 2, or at least most of them, will actually listen to what happens in this video. So, I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I will see you all in the next episode.